What's going on YouTube? My name is John Ayala and this is John Ayala Woodworks. If you guys are new here, hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate that. And if you're already subscribed, welcome back. Today I just wanted to show you guys how I made this simple wall cross. It's just a decorator's piece. It hangs on the wall and made it for a good customer of mine. So let's get into it. So I'm going to start out with test fitting this cross to see how tight it is. And as you can see, it's fairly tight because I have to tap it out with my fists. So I'm going to take the sander to it and just sand the edges just a little bit so I get a better fit and it's not so snug for the next uh, step when we put a chamfer on it. But here we go. And I like to chamfer both sides of the cross on this one. It gives it some depth and it's just not a flat piece of wood hanging on the wall. As you'll see, I'll do both sides. And it's always good to remember when you're working with a piece this small, you should really clamp it down to your work table just in case you get a piece, some kickback or the router gets knocked out of your hand you don't damage the piece and you have a little bit more control over the router So right here I'm doing a test fit after the chamfers just to make sure everything fits nice and snug. And as you can see it fits really good and I'm happy with this. So next is uh, grab the mineral spirits so I can wipe down the surface and get it clean and prepped for a sanding sealer. I used an amber tone sanding sealer on this to bring out the natural grain and color in the wood. And it actually helped a lot and I'll be using this uh, again in the future on projects like this. And who doesn't love a good grain reveal with some mineral spirits? It just makes that uh, black walnut pop. And you can see a lot of the figure in it once I did this. And I was happy with the piece and glad I actually kept this. This was a piece of scrap I had laying around. So now that everything is dry fitted, I'm going to put some glue on this. And... What I used for this is a Type Bonds Quick and Thick, and I like to use this for edge banding or for little projects like this that I just want to glue up in a hurry and not have to keep them in the clamps too long so I can move on to the next step. But what I do here is I just put on enough glue to coat the bottom and the sides, and I try to stay away from the edge as best I can just because when the squeeze out happens, uh, it can cause a little bit of a problem if you can't get all of it or it keeps seeping out after. You don't want to really scratch that or gouge that uh, sanded surface you've already done. So I'll put glue on both pieces so it gets a nice even uh, glue up and there's no air pockets in there. All right, now it's time to clamp the piece together, and you'll see I have a little bit of glue squeeze out here, which is fine. Nothing that a small chisel and a wet rag can't take care of. If you have a straw, that actually works a little bit better than a chisel, and you don't have to worry about gouging the surface. But I do recommend keeping a wet rag on hand just so you can clean up any of that uh, extra glue squeeze out and the residue it'll leave behind. So now that we got the piece out of the clamps, it's time to set up for the keyhole. And I like to mark an inch down, and then I'll make my mark an inch back up from it. So I have a one inch long keyhole. And this is fairly simple, pretty cut and dry process. What I'll do is I'll just mark it across. So here you see me laying out my cross marks. And I do this for both of them. So 
the top and the bottom. So the bottom is where I'm going to start, and then the top is, of course, where I'll end. And then I'll go ahead and I'll mark um, the width of it. So I get it nice and centered, as you can see here. And So now that I got all my lines marked out, I can set up the fence I use to do my keyholes and then get the keyhole bit itself centered to my mark. So what I'll do is I'll clamp that fence to the workpiece and then I'll clamp the workpiece to the work table, the work surface. So when I go down, I just lower it down slowly and then keep it as uh, square to the fence as I can and go forward and it seems to work pretty well. So right here I'm uh, applying the first coat of uh, Amber Tone Sanding Sealer and I usually don't use a sanding sealer on this. I'll uh, put oil base on these crosses but this is the first time I've used a waterborne um, finish on this and I'm actually really happy with it. And the amber, it's not a heavy amber, it's a very nice and light amber so it just accents the grain really nice and it lets it pop a lot more when you put the poly on it. So you're going to want to apply two coats of this uh, sanding sealer and then sand in between to knock it down because um, there's going to be some grain rays to this but once you do that it'll make it a silky smooth and I'm really happy I did this step. This is something I've never done before and it was worth uh, actually doing it. I sanded the sanding sealer uh, with 220 grit and it knocked down all the high spots and the grain rays. And it worked out really nice and it just let the poly go on a lot easier and a lot better than uh, I have done it before. And I'm using a polyurethane and sanding sealer from a company called Crystalac. They make a really amazing product that I like a lot. I've sprayed it and this is the first time I've hand applied it to something. And both ways it comes out really well. It uh, self levels so it takes kind of a lot of the guesswork out of most of this. On this piece I applied a couple uh, coats of the polyurethane off camera just to save some time here. I believe I put uh, five coats on this and I sanded in between coats even though you don't have to. My shop's a little bit dirty and there's always dust floating around the air so there was a couple dust nibs here and there but uh, I would sand with 400 grit between this and then finally I used a piece of white printer paper to uh, finish sand it and polish up that uh, semi-gloss a little bit and it actually worked really well. So I'm just going to quickly sand this again with 400 grit to knock down any of the dust nibs before my next coat. And I believe I'm on coat 3 here. Like I said, I did some off camera just to save a little bit of time. And it helped. I really like how smooth this stuff goes on. Um, and then you'll see me going back over it to just kind of level it out and get some of the bubbles out of it. But this stuff self levels and I didn't have any issues with the air bubbles that I didn't wipe away or I didn't see they uh, all leveled themselves out and they didn't become big voids or big holes I had a couple runs but I was able to fix that just pieces I didn't see like on the edge or on the very top part but I was able to sand those off and recoat because I did this in fairly light coats I didn't do a heavy coats at all because I wanted to get this evenly um, polyed and it worked really well So if you guys are interested in any of the products I use in this video, I'll be sure to link them down in the description below. Like I said, I really like that uh, polyurethane and sanding sealer from Crystal Axe, so I'll be sure to put that in there. And then here's me using this uh, plain white paper. It uh, blew my mind. A buddy of mine told me about this, and it really worked really well. It just made that surface glass smooth, and like I said, it took down any of the dust nibs that were on there. 
thank you guys very much for following along on this build. Uh, it was a fun one, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment, and I will answer them as best I can. Once again, thank you guys very much.